spiders. The eight-legged, web-spinning, creepy crawlies that everyone seems to have a phobia of. Why is that? Whether it's the eight spindly legs, the many eyes, or venomous bite, there always seems to be something unsettling to most about these arthropods. While the majority of spiders are completely harmless, there are a few potentially deadly exceptions to the rule. Today, you will learn just what happens if a brown recluse spider bites you. Stay tuned. The answer may not be what you think. The brown recluse, one of North America's most feared and hated spiders. Reports of horribly necrotic wounds and rotting flesh have been attributed to the bite of these secretive spiders. Are these spiders capable of such damage? Could a bite cost a limb, a life? Although these spiders have a nasty reputation, I'd argue it's almost entirely ill-deserved. Even though these arachnids do have certain necrotic properties in their venom, the amount of venom injected in a defensive bite simply isn't enough to cause the dramatic reactions people report. Don't believe me? Let's take a look at when I tested the bite of a brown recluse on myself and see just what happened to me. There it is, I'm gonna let it calm down a bit. Once again, Loxacelles reclusa, the brown recluse, in my opinion, a relatively harmless spider. I don't find these to be medically significant really in any capacity, and there are those that would disagree with me but from personal experience, from anecdotal experience, I have seen nothing that would warrant the re reputation that these spiders have. Come on, calm down. She's gonna like fall right in my lap the second I take this container away. I think Stop you're it. Doing more damage with the container than the spider will do. <laughs> oh, the container's really getting me, folks. Oh man. Oh, oh, oh. Definitely worse than a tarantula hawk. Ah! All right, enough of that. Let's uh, let's pin this spider, shall we? You guys have come for the show, okay? I'll I'll give you what you want. Come on. I just need like. I know. I just need to smash it on there. No, I don't want to hurt you. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Was that a little pinch? Oh, come on, get in there. Oh, okay, wow, that was a, wow, that was a really good pinch. Ow. Huh. All right, I'll let you go. Ooh, interesting. Really, that's Lada that you brought me from your house and I'm just gonna die. Oh, did I did I not tell you that? <laughs> yeah, that that was a Loxuselli's <laughs> ladder. Oh, good. Wow, actually, that was a little pinch. I'm surprised that hurt a lot more than my other one. So it bit me right in there. <gasps> oh God! Pretty sure the other one bit me while I was filming. <laughs> oh no! Zombie apocalypse, ground zero, right here, in this little forest, was me. Anyway, you can see it's a little bit pink, just to verify that I was bitten, so all the naysayers could say, hey, that didn't really bite you. If it was a real bite, you would have died already. No, sadly, sorry. I try and keep it over here, but it was in my hair. I'm follically blessed. So it might be a little hard to see. Now, here's what I'm expecting. I see it's right in there. Little hair, I'll move some of this hair out of the way. Got me right there. How sweet of her. She got me right there. Now, I think to the fullest extent, we might see what we saw in the previous bite. 
which was maybe some lymphangitis, which is not blood poisoning. It is evidence of bacteria in the lymphatic system, which can be easily addressed and your immune system can take care of it. That's why it is swollen. It's because your immune system's on it, taking care of you, taking care of me. So if we see that, that's gonna look like red striations going up my lymphatic system into my armpit. Nothing to be concerned about. Now I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. The second I notice a bump, what should I do? I should wash it with soap and water, right? To alleviate the risk of topical bacteria sneaking their way into the bite. Then what should I do next? I don't know. Might be a good idea to put some uh, topical antiseptic cream on there. Some antibiotics that you can buy at like CVS. Not doctor prescribed, because that was the confusion in my other video but just some over the counter for little cuts and scrapes, you know, just to keep the wound clean. Put a bandaid on it if you want, don't put a bandaid on it if you don't want. But doing that for about a week, week and a half, all effects should be gone. Maybe two weeks max, all effects should be gone, okay? I promise, I'm not trying to get people hurt. I'm not trying to trick anybody. I'm not, there's no magic of the camera. This is done in one take, you can take a look here. See, there's a little bump now where she got me. Good envenomation. I actually felt it, which I'm surprised. It was a little bit of a pinch, not super painful. There's no risk of, of anaphylaxis from a spider bite, no risk of allergic reaction, severe allergic reaction. So it's okay. It's not the end of the world. These are not harbingers of death. They're spiders. If you're uncomfortable with them in your home, scoop them up, throw them outside. Now, brown recluse venom is equipped with a little something called sphingomyelinase D. Now, this is the component of saccharid venom that causes cell damage and death, aka necrosis. Now, in larger species like Loxoceles lata, the Chilean recluse, or some of the larger six-eyed sand spiders, this component is in such a high volume that not only can it cause extensive tissue damage, it can also cause multi-system organ failure. So this is a dangerous part of their venom. However, due to the size and small size of the venom glands in this species, it is incredibly unlikely that you would see any dangerous tissue damage or cell death. Now you can see here that I actually experienced a good amount of typical necrosis. Now note, there was no rotting flesh, there was no secondary bacterial infection. This red patch was dead cells. These were cells destroyed by the sphingomyelinase D. Now that is necrosis, however, does this look similar to the same huge black rotted craters in people's arms, legs, back that they attribute to the spider's bite? Not so much. In fact, this is going to be an extreme envenomation from Aloxoceles reclusa. And as you can see, still not something that came even close to threatening my limb. Now, I will note... Should you believe you've been bitten by a brown recluse and in actuality have a horrible gangrenous bacterial infection that is super far along, please seek medical help. This is not a video to excuse actual serious bacterial infections that could become life-threatening or threatening of a limb. Please go to the doctor because this is something I'm passionate about. Misunderstood animals, that's all they are, misunderstood. They're beautiful creatures. They've got a role in the ecosystems that they're a part of. They have a reason to be here. They have a life and they're important. No reason, no reason at all to have harbor such aggressive prejudice towards the beautiful animals that we share this planet with. So stick around and see if I'm telling you the truth or if I get to go to the hospital. Well, there you have it, the aggressive, 
venomous, flesh-melting brown recluse is nothing more than an urban legend run rampant. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something and I hope your eyes were opened to the plight of these interesting spiders. Now, if you're interested in seeing the full videos that I used for reference in this video, check out the video description. It should be underneath our video. I will have links attached to not only my recent one brown recluse bite test, but my brown recluse bite test that I did a few years ago as well. I've got a ton of great bite and sting videos as well attached to my channel. Be sure to check those out. Thanks so much for watching. Again, I hope you learned something interesting, and I'll see you next time.